Nah, dan gue merah itu lawa, gue nggak itu abu ah. Anda tali tak kena warung dengan radio Fijiwan, nando mai viti. Radio Fijiwan, nando mai viti. Yang pernah kau ingat morning Fiji in this bulletin fish poisoning concerns. Nari Koso relocation begins this week. And police training hampered by border restrictions. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. The Fisheries Ministry is urging Fijians to be vigilant while consuming fish this festive season. Minister Semi Kuro Lavasau says there is a high chance for people having fish poisoning, taking into consideration the sea worm or Mbalolo season and the current hot weather. Kuro Lavasau says some fish eat Mbalolo and with the current humid weather, it's important to take precautions against fish poisoning. Some poisonous fish include Kawakawa and Donu, Dokonivundi and Damu. It's time where there's Mbalolo uh, season and people need to be very careful. There's a uh, species of uh, even uh, Kaukawa, Donu. Uh, you have um, uh, other fish species that are normally poisonous. The, the tendency to become poisonous is much higher during Mbalolo period. Families in Narikosa and Kandavu are putting in the final touches to seven houses that will mark the beginning of the relocation of the entire village. Narikosa village representative Kelepi Saugitonga says it's been eight years since the project began and it's a bittersweet moment as the pilot project is the first for Kandavu. Saugitonga says the families that will relocate first are the ones living in the red zone with seawater surrounding their homes during high tide. The European Union and GIZ funded relocation pilot project will be launched by Prime Minister Wurenge Mbaini Marama this Thursday. This is one of the big moments, one of the greatest moments as from our history uh, this is one of the history in Nerikoso because this is one of the biggest projects that's been done in Nerikoso and it's one of the biggest projects in Kandavu. So the people of uh, Nerikoso, especially the ones that are staying in Suba and uh, the ones who are staying in the villages, they are now started to have a preparation about this, uh, the dates of this opening. Now, sorry, market vendors have raised concerns about the new market being built about two meters below the road level. Local government minister Pamela Kumar says the market was a designed and built project, and now they're focusing on service delivery. Kritika Kumar reports. The minister says the Nosori market is fairly new, and they are focused on enhancing service delivery. I know the, the vendors have been raising their concern that the uh, market is uh, situated a little lower. Than, than from the road level, uh, but I personally feel that uh, uh, it's, it's all done and dusted. Uh, we just have to continue providing the service now, right? And that's what we are focusing on. Kumar adds vendors have also raised concerns regarding the availability of space in the market, and the town council is working on another commercial project to create more room. So we would like to give options uh, to the vendors who are currently operating from the market and the business size is much bigger. You know, if you look at the turnover, which is more than 100,000. So we will be encouraging them to take up a space in that complex. Nikolesh Chand, a farmer and vendor from Waituri Irrigation, says on busy days, a lack of space causes issues. Every weekend we have to come early and do our setup because it's really difficult for us to get space and we have to sit outside and sell our produce. Kumar says they are working with stakeholders to address space shortage and providing parking space. The Nosori market was opened in 2015. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Acting Commissioner of Police Rusia Tetunravu is calling on Pacific police leaders to find ways around the pandemic and enhance capacity development. ACP Tetunravu made the statement during the first sitting of the Pacific Police Training Advisory Group held by virtual conferencing. He is also the chair of the Pacific Islands Chiefs of Police. Tundravo says it has been a difficult and challenging year with the closure of borders restricting travel. But policing leaders need to adjust to the new norm. He adds training cannot wait for a cure for the pandemic and they must constantly look for ways around it. Up ahead, flying Fijians optimistic of playing Italy. And Malele trials for touch rugby. Hi, Bula.
I'm CLI from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. The flying Fijians will have further tests tomorrow before round two of the Autumn Nations Cup. Fiji was supposed to play France yesterday, but the match was cancelled following the four positive coronavirus cases in the flying Fijians camp. As Aquila Vama reports, the remaining three matches in the tournament could also be at risk. <laughs> FRU Chief Executive John O'Connor says all players and team management have been placed under quarantine, isolated in their individual rooms. However, more tests will be conducted. Hopefully we can get uh, negative results. They can participate uh, in the match against Italy. And, and then when they come back, the, the normal of in the they have to be in quarantine, they have to be tested. The FRU and team management are optimistic that everything will work out in time for the match against Italy. I think on the positive side, no one has any symptoms, no one has any high temperature. Um, yeah, so the team uh, morale is quite high. Even head coach Vern Korta is pleased with how the team is reacting to the challenging situation. We'll come back and prepare for Italy and go and play Italy, then we'll come back and prepare for Scotland, then there's one more game. So it's, it's all in all, it's been complex, but it's been helped so much by the, by the positive attitude from players and staff. The Flying Fijians are scheduled to play Italy at 12.45 a.m. on Sunday. Aquila Vama. FBC Sports. Many players from the Skipper Cup were part of the Region 3 Women's Tense Tournament in Suva yesterday. However, it was the new talents that pleased selectors. Fijiana 15's coach, Senirusi Seruvakula, Fijiana 7's mentor, Sayasi Fuli, former Flying Fijians coach and Fiji Rugby Development Officer, Noke Male, were closely following the action. Seruvakula says they identified some future prospects. Uh, we've got the... Uh... The top guns of the Skipper Cup are Nita Siri, Televu and Suba. So the, the talent ID is mainly for those teams that comes from Serua, Northland and, and Northern Bulls. And, and I'm very impressed with the, with the turnout today. About 100 players turn up for the Fiji Touch Rugby Trials yesterday. The trials for both the men's and women's teams were held at Muslim Primary School grounds and it's the first national event after the lockdown. Among the trialists was National Touch Rugby rep Enele Malele, fresh from helping Suva win the Skipper Cup for the third year in a row over the weekend. National coach Tomasi Tiko was organizing things at the ground and also searching for some new talents. The newly crowned WBF Asia-Pacific Super Welterweight Champion Chesse the Hitman Ravundi is now looking for opponents overseas. After his technical knockout win over Ronald Naidu on Saturday night in Nandi, the 28-year-old wants to go back to where he debuted. Philippe Nicasso has more. 28-year-old Chesse Ravundi has made his intentions clear on where he's planning to fight next following a huge win on Saturday night over Ronald Naidu. Australia, baby. I'm Australia next year, for sure. I'm Australia next year. Thank you. Ravundi's record is currently 11 wins, 4 losses and a draw. During his stint in Australia back in 2013, he fought 7 times, winning 4 and had a draw. Meanwhile, Eroni Lingaloa, who suffered his first defeat on the night, says it's not the end for him. But I'd really love to fight uh, Alfred again. I know I got him a few times. But uh, I couldn't follow up on that. Eh? So I'll go back home, uh, improve my stamina, maybe come back and fight him again. Boxing fans can also expect more fights in the future. Right now, we have two key promoters promoting boxing in Fiji. We will be looking at another program shortly. The current boxing promotion has also been hailed a success. Philip and Icaso, FBC Sports. Quick look at the weather map for today. It is Tuesday, the 17th of November, the start of a brand new week and a short week too. Expect cloudy periods with brief showers and possible isolated afternoon or evening thunderstorms over the western parts of Iti Levu, eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Elsewhere, fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers and possible thunderstorms. 
And that is UFPC Morning News. Join us at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. Remember, in times of crisis, you need factual news that you can trust. Stop believing fake news about the COVID-19 on social media. Fight misinformation by getting only the facts about the coronavirus from verified news sources like FBC's TV, radio and digital media news. FBCnews.com.fj, keeping Fijians connected with the truth. Hi, my name is Prashant. I live in Suba. I love Mirchi FM because Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot.